Welcome to the Fan Club YouTube channel. Please make sure to subscribe, like this video, and comment down below. Have you seen those videos of the guy who's like, how your friends, or how you think your friends are going to react when someone tells you that they're like intermittent fasting or like <laughs> yes, that waking guy's up great. early? That guy's That's how great. I feel sometimes. My favorite one, office. my favorite one that I know sometimes when I do stuff or like I do a lot of that stuff, but one of my favorite ones is like people who post the, like their hospital bracelets because it's so Durham. specific and random, but so many people post like they're in the hospital with their bracelets on as like a flex kind of and it's just people comment the most specific things about it of like what the guy does next and then he just comes up with just the best comment it's really funny no no you <laughs> couldn't do that man or what there's are we that gonna one, do there's that one from friday beers that skit where it's a guy who's like who doesn't drink or whatever oh yeah that, one that is was so my favorite good. one that is so funny yeah <laughs> yeah i'll probably just stay in tonight fellas <laughs> And then everyone's like, okay, cool. He's <laughs> like, yeah, I don't really drink anymore. I'm off the sauce. <laughs> That's what that people um, have been saying, too, about running. Is that people that were that's a big one. people uh, that's becoming a trend because everyone's starting to run now. 75 right? like hard. People that ex what they expect to think when I tell my friend group that uh, I'm like training for a marathon and stuff. And like everyone's I supposed to stand got, up like, and give them applause. I'm conscious about that <laughs> now because it's. Uh, I, it's like, no, well, now you can't post about your training because, True. you know, people are like, oh, everyone's doing this and they probably think I'm just, uh, yeah, so you're stuck. Now you're stuck in the middle. It's tough because you guys are about to start a marathon series too and it's like, we're not going to tell you about it though. <laughs> Once I see it on there though, I'm going to comment. I need to look up this intermittent, fa intermittent fast. Well, that's just an bit. example. That's no, just I like when Frizz talks about how, yeah, I'm not, I'm like, oh, time for lunch. Yellow, you yeah. want to go for lunch? And Frizz is like, yeah, I'm not eating today. <laughs> yeah, I'm not eating till about seven. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I know. The other, like, another funny one is like the when the friend said he doesn't like go out anymore, and then like all the minions, like how people are supposed to react, are like, oh no, how are we gonna have any fun now? Oh. <laughs> the night's ruined. <laughs> you have to show us some examples because that sounds pretty funny. Mm -hmm. Good skits. Good. What's another? What's another? Running, getting up early. Uh, fasting, not drinking. We have a lot of them in our group that we all do. Yeah. What What else would it be? Um, probably. Well, our little me and Lawson's a little bit working late. Oh, that yeah. One. That <laughs> one's freaking. That one's <laughs> run its course. Yeah, that bit's over. Thank yeah, God. It was always a bit for Frizz. That's the thing. That's why I didn't. No, like I it. had to. I had to be awake. I may not yeah, have been doing be as awake. much. There's a difference you know between being awake and working late. Kind <laughs> of a sneaky one is on our flights, Frizz always tends to go, so you sleep at all? You sleep at all on this that oh, flight? That's his I got like 45 question. full minutes. I wish I try and sleep the <laughs> whole flight. He's counting on my two in his sleep. Like, nah. I love it when this guy sleeps, I, and he always sneakily sleeps. I probably actually sleep every flight. Yeah, I sneaky. And you I work yourself them. to sleep. Like you, you well, work until. Yeah. Oh yeah. So don't you tell that story? I don't think you ever told that story. What do you the mean? last flight from uh, Detroit, or was yeah. either going to Detroit or coming back? You literally physically passed out working. Well, <laughs> yeah, I was like planning on <laughs> yeah. editing on my phone, and then I think the combination of the plane, like the like the constant buzz and being in the air makes automatically makes me tired i think you said something like that before. i know I, I have a there's a scientific well, thing about sleeping that actually in cars yeah car rides planes it's moving forward it's moving forward and i may be making this up completely but mimics being in the womb mm. that's what, yep. that's what, where i heard that <laughs> yeah yep. i knew i heard that somewhere i mean me. it's true i get tired in cars yeah you um, you automatically get tired from that constant buzz i don't know wait is that does it say that online Ohio State University Science yeah. and Technology. Oh. Yeah, the inside yeah. of a moving car is a lot like the safe, warm, and quiet environment inside your womb. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. So I think on planes I get sleepy. And going back to the story, just editing, and then I was getting so tired while looking at my phone that I just would close my eyes for like 20 seconds and then 30 seconds. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I was sleeping in the same spot. A little Hands lullaby. 
hands were holding my phone and then I was just out. That's funny. That's a good sleep though. Yeah. When, it you, was. when you just are so tired, you fall asleep. That's when you know you just. You gotta have to listen sleep. to yourself sometimes. You gotta li- That's what I do. You just listen when you're tired. So since you got up at four thirty, you think you'd be out by like nine tonight? Usually late at night. I usually get tired in the afternoons yeah. from waking up early. But actually, I'll probably have more energy in the evening. We'll see. More energy drinks? No. One Celsius, then I'll be good. That's impressive. Think, yeah. You gonna go for a run? No, because yeah. I already worked out this morning. Oh, definitely, beauty. Definitely not. <laughs> definitely not doing two for days. <laughs> yeah, I was. W- we were waiting for that one. Yeah, you, f- you baited me right into that. Was that. A bait. Uh, hey, we were talking a little bit about uh, cartoon shows before this, S- specifically SpongeBob. What? Uh, did you have a favorite childhood show growing up? Uh, for cartoons, I'd probably say Recess or SpongeBob. Oh, Recess! Was I don't know good. if I've ever seen yeah. that one. Really, that was a good one. Recess, classic. I was uh, kind of split between the first show that I vividly remember watching was Phineas and Ferb. Mm. Yeah, that was pretty good too. And then SpongeBob, that was a classic. And um, was uh, shoot, there's one with the dog. I remember Blue's Clues. No, not Blue's Clues. <laughs> Clever cat dog. Not Remember Cat Dog? It was like uh, the cowardly. Oh yeah, I forgot what it's called. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I'll I'll pass the mic and I'll <laughs> look it up quick because my dad always quotes from that cartoon. Courage show. the Cowardly Dog. Yeah, that was a show. So it was those three were the three that I watched oh, the I most. I think the I think Clifford was the first thing I remember oh. watching. That's I don't know if there's any now. cartoon earlier than that. Maybe right. Rainbow Fish. Did anyone watch? Yeah, Rainbow? that and Clifford. Franklin. Might be I and watched Frank, Franklin. And Franklin and, and Winnie the Pooh. Those four have to be the first. Those are like four old. TV shows I would have ever watched. Franklin and then I the moved Turtle. on. Uh, a lot of the Disney Channel shows, and then I went all into those. Phineas and Ferb, too. I watched a lot. I think and I then watched. right into MTV. <laughs> never never <laughs> watched MTV. Teddy, I bet I can guess she's one of your favorite shows. Guess. King of the Hill. <laughs> My dad used to have that on the TV. Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> Beavis oh, and Butthead. That show is so annoying. You don't I like Beavis that. and Butthead? No, I hate that, that show. That show is annoying. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't remember what I used to watch. There was a dinosaur one. Land I don't Before know. Time? Uh, I don't know the name. Um, Roly, Roly Poly? Yeah. Yep. Yep. I remember Roly that Poly show. Oly. Yeah. Who in this room was the Simpsons kid? Mm-mm. I watched it Him. like occasionally. I wouldn't like go out to watch it, but if it was on, I would watch it. I always preferred The Simpsons over Family Guy. Didn't watch neither. I was not a Simpsons kid. Were you a Family Guy kid? Family Guy teen, I guess. Okay. Not really oh, a kid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I was never wa- allowed to watch either of those shows, so. My better. Always thought people that watched Simpsons were a little bit uh, <laughs> funky. No, not funky, but just they're like bad kids almost. <laughs> yeah, I definitely <laughs> watched it. That's how I felt sometimes. You know what show? Did ever, anyone ever watch Workaholics? A little bit. I heard of it. Stern used to watch it all the time, so I, I watched it. Some of these shows on like Comedy Central and stuff, I always thought like, man, those kids are lucky they get to watch Comedy <laughs> Central. Those shows are probably so funny. <laughs> yeah, I remember, wa- li- oh, I remember about, watching What uh, about Futurama? Never watched a little that. bit. Seen us. That's Cartoon two. Network, I think. I just have one more question about shows. We're gonna re- relate it back to hockey. Mm. But what was your junior hockey show? If there's one show that you would say, I think of junior hockey when I s- hear the show, because you have a lot of downtime in junior hockey, and you're always that was the era where I watched the most Netflix and TV. And for me, it was Prison Break and The Office, two shows that I always think of junior hockey yeah. when I because I would after a game get home and I would just watch those. Prison and Break for me also. Yeah. Definitely was popular at that time. But there was one more. Trailer Park Boys as well. I watched that oh, through junior. Yeah. Watched that. I, I watched, watched that every episode I through junior hockey. I think I watched that before. I wa- before I can move to Canada because I wanted to figure I watched out what that Canada was like. I watched The Ranch when I was playing mm. juniors That's on a good Netflix show. that came out and that 70s show because they all had the same characters. So I watched those both. Neither. Actually, here here's a sneaky junior show that was when it was good. It was Riverdale. Dude, oh yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I remember that one. 
That yeah. was pop, like that was when they were coming out yeah. weekly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dang. Right after practice, Riverdale. head home to a nice dark Talking basement. Talking about it in the locker room. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I, I uh, like my billet house in Dauphin. It was in the country, and they didn't have Wi-Fi, so like no Netflix, nothing Sounds like great. that. So we literally that was like the only continuous show we could watch weekly and still kind of be up to date with like social media and then your, your own, own teammate and stuff. Dude, my billet dad, he he used to shred on the guitar for like. Or billet like guitar hero? No, like he was like legit a really good guitarist. <laughs> so I remember like that was almost uh for sure like multiple nights a week we'd sit there and he'd just be shredding to us. <laughs> but for show wise, breaking bad. So office. you listen to your billet dad shred guitar <laughs> yeah, four nights freaking, a week? <laughs> freaking right after supper. It. Oof. Concert. But I'm my billet mom electric or acoustic? Out. Acoustic. My I was thinking of like, like he was rocking yeah, the whole yeah. house. No, 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 no. No, uh, no my billet mom, she was um, a nutritionist at the university there. So frick, we that was the best year and a half of meals I've ever had, and probably will ever have. She was such a good cook, better than Frizz. Oh, challenge accepted. That just brought an interesting question. Which is what do you think the best occupation for a billet parent is? Because nutritionist has got to be. I never thought of that, but that is sick. Like a, your billet parent being like a nutritionist or a chef. Yeah, back then I probably would have thought that was boring. Yeah. But like now that would be great to live with a nutritionist. Back then I didn't really care what I ate. Like my first billet made fried True. food every night, and I was like, heck yeah. Yeah. As long as there's, there's something. I to don't eat know there. though. I had a That'd lot a of different one. billets. I think I had five different billets, six different billets. They, they, no, I never had a bad one. I was so lucky. I never had a bad one. So many different like living situations and places and never had a bad one. They all did completely different stuff and they all made great food. I think it helps when they have kids for sure because they're not lazy. Well, for the most part, from my experience, they always had multiple kids. So they'd be used to making a lot of food and they were never struggling which was nice because i know some billets sometimes use that extra money and try and like pocket it and really i don't know cheap out on stuff Mm -hmm. so mine were never like that so there was always tons of great food and snacks and stuff i remember uh will's old billets that someone that lived there before you said like they would just serve uh like i don't know carrots and stuff for dinner (laughs) just like (laughs) i don't remember what it was but Maybe on the side, I don't know. I, they uh, <laughs> on the side. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. There was a lot of uh, easy meals. The first billet. And it was a treat moving in, moving in with the Weebs the second year because they made some good dinners. But I'll tell you the yeah. best billet you could ever have Carrots. is uh, a relative. I lived with my uncle for a year and a half. That was amazing. That was a lot of fun. Relative is good. Yeah. Funkle. Funkle. I had the fun uncle. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, it was sick. Uh, yeah, no, no billet rules with him. <laughs> my there billet was a my billet was a flight attendant, so she was there like half the time. Otherwise, she'd be flying. That's why oh. <laughs> so you guys were busy partying it up in the basement. We were busy uh, drinking beer and watching the ranch <laughs> on the couch. Had a boy, <laughs> <laughs> flight attendant. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What else would be a good occupation? I don't know. Depends who they are. Like, if if yeah. you hate them, then you hope they're a flight attendant. I think they're it'd never be, there. It'd be cool. Like, I don't know if any of you guys had uh, a bailout or knew anyone from like teams you're on, but like one that would own like a restaurant or yeah, like something like yeah. to that extent, or like a coffee shop. That'd be sick if they owned like a coffee shop in town. I've literally had I've had billet dads at uh, prison guard, <laughs> teachers, um, like an oil rig worker um you had it all uh uh hydro worker like just Dang. completely different stuff yeah and they, they all, all reach out to you still like do you keep in contact with that i even? could yeah they sure. know what you're doing one of them uh one well some some of you might know this but one of them uh, was caught in like a scandal in nipua he they owned a home hardware and Apparently, he burnt it down for $2 million insurance, mm. said it was electrical, and that was just going on as I was there. So he didn't do anything because he was waiting for the insurance. And then, like, 
two years ago or something, we found out that they, he never got it, never Dang. got the insurance. Oh, wow. Yeah, or not I, billets I, anymore either. He burned all the supplies to make a new building. Yeah. Too bad. Tough to get away with arson. <laughs> True. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Let's get into some hockey talk. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. I want to say one other funny part. Let it that out. That adds to that story. He was like upgrade. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> sucked because he was like upgrading his house because he was thinking that he was going to be getting uh, all this money. So like, they got a hot tub, a back deck built, all this stuff. And then he was telling me how like when it comes, he's putting a pool over there. Oh my and, like gosh. he was telling me all these plans. You're and living then, in the yeah. best time there. Yeah, and then boom, never happened. But anyways, back to it. <laughs> Just sounded like that Lampoon's Christmas movie when the guy's building a pool. He doesn't and get his yeah. bonus. Yeah, he doesn't get the bonus. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Rick and Clark. Was that his name? Yeah. Yeah, Clark. All right, fellas. So the Coyotes. They miss. They're missing the playoffs for the fourth straight season. And we oh. love the Coyotes. You know. We love Mr. Clayton Keller, their team over there. And they had a fun night last night with Josh Doan making his NHL debut. It's nice to bring a little light to a franchise who's been struggling lately. So Josh Doan, son of Coyotes legend. And you said last active Winnipeg Jets player before they moved? Yeah, he Something was like the that. <laughs> Shane Doan, the last. He was the last Winnipeg Jet of the OG team to mm. play in the NHL. Well, his son Josh, born and raised Arizona, I'm assuming. Maybe he was born in Winnipeg. I don't know. Played for Arizona State. Got called up for his first NHL game last night and scored two goals. So he uh, probably didn't have to commute far after class to make the game. He probably took <laughs> the walk down the hall from his Arizona <laughs> State locker room. Wow. Right to the Oaks. How crazy is that? that is, yeah, the class thing is crazy. Yeah. He, pro- he was in class this week for yeah. sure. Wow. You would think at least. After yeah. that. Not anymore, after man. After two goals, I ain't showing up to class the rest of the year. <laughs> Are you done? Not going to finish your degree at that point? Uh, maybe Maybe just take a break till the season's officially over. Yeah, he's, he's only got a few weeks left. Yeah. Is uh, his dad, is he part of the Coyotes for, like, organization he does something sure, for yeah. them not like a management role or like a gm or anything like that but his dad played for the team when gretzky coached them damn you, do you guys remember when gretzky was a coach yeah. nope i, I didn't do remember, remember that. that a little bit it's crazy i got a jersey a coyotes jersey and it's signed by gretzky and i was like what the heck <laughs> and my mom told me the story because she won it at a raffle <laughs> <laughs> you ever put it on no, it's just hanging up hanging in the closet. The <laughs> Is it a 99 Coyotes jersey? It's just a plan Coyotes jersey, no number. It's signed by the whole squad, though. It's a lot of years for Shane, hey? Yeah. Holy. Is there a lot of college players getting called up, or is that pretty selective? I don't really know how that really works. Well, I Coming. think all the nasty ones are still in. So, like, after, uh, oh, yeah, I guess the Frozen Four is in start, two weeks. Well, the playoffs start tomorrow, or the cha- tournament okay. starts tomorrow. Dang. Yeah, so I'd, it'll be some more college players making their wa- their rounds. Yeah, I was just gonna say I know when I remember when I was in Omaha, there was no one that was directly like right to the NHL, but there was a lot of guys drafted, and we never made playoffs or anything, so we were always pr- out pretty soon. And then there was a, a few guys that would go, they would take a break from school, or they talk to their uh, professor, similar in D three when you know when you go to the East Coast, and then they'll head over to like that team and they'll. Whether they're like a black ace or there's something like that for the the period there. Never played a game, but yeah, then they would come back for whenever that NHL team was done. But it was cool because they was just they were like hanging out with the team and then they would come back. Right. And for Josh, I think that's sweet because it's not like he's even leaving his team. Probably living in the same mm-hmm. place and it's just like these other guys are whatever, done practice or done in their spring and he's like, Yeah, I'm just heading over to play an NHL game they'd come <laughs> back with uh their new team gear they got show yeah. it off oh, walk yeah. through the room do you think <laughs> he was going from uh his class to class and telling everyone to come <laughs> watch him play tonight there's game probably tonight. so many like like I don't know I would imagine a lot of the school it looked like a fun night at the Mullet Arena last time like from I feel the like they get a lot of college people going to those games Potentially, I don't know. Yes, we'll find out. They one still day. got some Yotes fans down there. <laughs> yeah. There's still hockey fans there. It's just, I don't know how many because they can't fit that many. But, but regardless, they're there. Scoring two goals in your debut, 
That does not happen often. And so they announced, him. announced their plans for a new arena in Phoenix. Oh, so it is staying They're local. trying. Well, it's the renderings are out. They mm-hmm. still have to go through all the approval things. They have the business plan and the structure, but... Are you guys aware exactly how that whole process works? Like, what does that mean that they're doing the new building structure? Because they did something similar well, they a have year to or two ago. it to the city now, and then once the city approves, then they could start building. So yeah. what they did last year, everyone voted, and it never passed. So they think that this new spot, new location, I'm assuming, new everything new, What's the what's the area they're aiming for? I want to say it's in North Phoenix, and it was like this whole plan for a big arena district, yeah. restaurants, everything like that. That'd be so sweet. So Glendale's the one who kicked them out. Gotcha. Because they weren't in Phoenix. Here's a prediction. The rink gets put up in Phoenix. You had all this young talent there. They're pissed off for losing four straight seasons, not making playoffs. They have a good team. The team starts winning, making playoffs. Matthews goes home. Oh, people have been like trying to six <laughs> years. People have been writing that when they story have a new rink. Like when they have five a new rink, years now, and it just keeps getting pushed. So you think that 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 could be legit? Bunch of young talent out there. Teams bound to be good in the next five years. It'd be fun if they're good. We'll see. There's a lot of talk, a lot of talk about Atlanta getting another team again. Thrashers. I don't know if that's what they'll be called. That's but a there's Salt a Lake. Lot of talk. Salt Lake's one or two. One or two on the list. As like well. if Phoenix doesn't work, that's where they're looking to go. Uh oh. Expansion. We're talking expansion. Fine. Put a fine. It's Bates. Hey Batesy. Fine. Dude, um, yeah, that it's just a cool story. Mm-hmm. Two goals, good for him. It worked for Vegas, so if they can make it happen in Scottsdale or Phoenix, whatever, I think it'd be just as fun as Vegas. because that's a great city. Yeah. Just gotta have a team and a rink. Need both of those. And a city that backs you. That's <laughs> yeah. also important. Yeah. Not the weather. Speaking of weather. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> We've had some bad weather here. Yeah, we have. A few days of blizzards. Blizzarding. Cold. Blustering snow. But had some wet socks going to work every day. <laughs> yeah. Frizz fell in the snow. Yeah. He did. Lost some with tacos. A f- with a tray full of tacos for us. Poor yeah. guy. Tough one. But we did make it out to a PWHL Minnesota game finally. First one for us. First Bear. official game at the... We trucked Excel. right through that blizzard, didn't care. And there was almost 8,000 people there as well Yeah, that they announced. So how was that experience? First game at home. It's cool. I uh, had the the duty of grabbing a PR box here at the office. So I uh, made a funny video bringing this PR box basically from... Inside here, the office, all the way to the XL, which then obviously you watch the game and handed that to Taylor. But the game in general was a lot of fun. Good atmosphere. Mm-hmm. It was fun. It was a good game too. Yeah, I thought they were going to get smoked because they were down two rip in like the first five minutes. Yeah, like Yelly said, uh, I loved it. I love the. Uh, I like the part where just uh, how there's so much new people in that building. I feel like that aren't the typical Wild fan. So I thought that was pretty cool that they're coming. It's like a new market, truly, that I don't think they're going to be going to. They're not, like, going to both games. It's, like, new family, obviously a little bit more of a female demographic. You guys brought the girls with and stuff. And then, yeah, like you said, good game. Great game. Mm-hmm. Probably one of the, Actually, that was my, maybe my favorite game, PWHL game we've been to so far. Two back-to-back shootouts yeah. we've been to. And watching Taylor Heisey in person, too. How did you... she has a shot. She's nasty. That's what I was looking forward to because she's best of the best and seeing how she performs out there. And she's very smooth, very smooth skater. Great shot. That that impressed me. She rang a slap shot right off the goalie's head, and I was like, wow. (laughs) Yeah. Ouch. And she's, like, pulling, like, the moves she did, too. There's, like, one time in overtime coming down, big kind of a toe drag, Right one around, on one, yeah. Yeah, on a one on one. And it's just fun to see players like that and you're actually watching like good hockey, good moves. So it was a great game. Yeah, and the shootout goals are pretty sweet too. I didn't know that you could resend a shooter after three. Just yeah. another sneaky rule. Yeah. So it's a five round shootout, but you can resend a shooter after the first three rounds. It is interesting. I was caught off guard. I thought it was only three rounds, but Yeah, you I mean, celebrated got a, got after the extra. third. <laughs> anywhere, anywhere was yeah. celebrating, thought we won. It was. Uh, I thought it was funny. Uh, 
Like it's just like a different, um, like in between whistle atmosphere from like the music they play to stuff on the jumbotron, and we obviously made it on the jumbotron, which is really funny. So it's just like uh, more of a like when you go to a wild game, you're there like for hockey, but I feel like this has more of that like flavor of there's more to than just watching the game for these like younger hockey fans, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a great, great thing for people who, you know, may not be able to afford a wild game because those tickets are probably double or triple the price. Yeah. You could still get to go to the XL Energy Center, take your kids to a game. You can imagine taking, say you got three kids and you're taking a group of four or five to a wild game. Like you're probably in the hole over 500 bucks. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And so here it's just more accessible for people and the uh, the product on the ice with the game was well worth it. And another thing that they did that y- you can get in this league and not the NHL, but like after the game, players coming up to the concourse, not having to get, you know, a pass down below to, to say hi, but they're they're coming up after their game and they're interacting with a ton of people like the line on the concourse. It's massive. There's a huge line. And I don't think there's anything special about that night where they're like no, it was advertising just three players signing. I yeah, went to the end and saw exactly. So I think that's really huge for people getting something out of it. It's not only you get to watch, but these younger kids that are have a favorite player, they uh, can interact with them too. You know after. what's funny about that line? It had to be probably it was a quarter of the concourse. A quarter it had of the to whole be like building. a thousand people, eight hundred. Yeah. Like it, it was huge. Only a quarter. And the, the whole time building. during the game, they're announcing that three players from the PWHL were signing autographs. <laughs> they didn't even say who. Yeah. And there was that big of a line. It. Yeah. Kind of like how that, remember even talking to Jackson Olsen about Savannah Bananas after their game, how they, they it's not the, uh, it's not necessarily what's on the field, but it's the one-to-one conversations and interactions after that they do that makes those oh, this was just my first game type fan into I love the league now. I got to meet this person. They made my day, and now I'm, like, bought in. So I think that's a good, a really good play on their part to keep these fans, like, coming and keep growing the audience size for, for every game. So that's my thoughts. Yeah, now they got a break. Yeah, a month break. It's for Worlds or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be it's interesting in to see now um, next season. See so they're capturing all these capturing all these fans this season. What's next season gonna look? Kind of like? excited to maybe go catch a playoff game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that too. Because Minnesota's either they're tied for first with Toronto. So we go catch a playoff game. Could yeah. be pretty re- fun. Do Overall. they go back and forth like NHL playoffs? No clue. <laughs> yeah, pro- probably. Not even sure how long the series are. I feel like they're best of five. Okay. I don't even know if I think I've heard seven. that somewhere. Best of five, yeah. Yeah. Well, we shall see. Hillary Knight said that. Keep on uh, having the Minnesota team. Go purple. I got one more thing to say about it because Yelly, because we had the girls there and uh, Sam and Jamie played college hockey. So we asked them. Yelly learned that uh, that girls do wear makeup when they play. Some of them. Not all the time. But that was a. You, you you were surprised by that, hey? That fun fact? Yeah, I was surprised by the makeup thing because that just doesn't seem like, why would you do that if you're going to be sweating? Second, uh, I learned that girls, uh, they are a lot more ruthless when it comes to <laughs> like chirping an opponent than I could have ever imagined. So, yeah, I learned a few things from, from in, inside the glass of a female playing hockey. Like what? <laughs> I don't know, man. Some of those chirp examples is just like I would never have expected that. But yeah, like, like chirping spray tans and yeah, makeup and stuff. Makeup, like I, I don't even know why you put makeup on because like you're s- you're sweating. Probably deserve to get chirped if you have makeup <laughs> yeah. on. Yeah. Have you never not thought to ever ask Jamie that? Nope. That was never a question ever that popped in my head. If I'm being honest with you. That's funny. Yeah. Would you wear makeup? Do you think if you played women's hockey? He does. <laughs> it's an odd question. Men's hockey. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an odd question. I was, uh, <laughs> I was up in the stands. So I didn't have to worry about it. sweating <laughs> off. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I don't. Maybe I would. She said. Well, Jamie said it was a look good, feel good, play good thing, which which makes sense. There is the one thing that I, the girls also chirp about, which they didn't mention. We were talking about when they do flow out. 
flows oh, out yeah. when mm. they just let their hair down and like not tie it up or do anything. That's that a trip. I've heard of that actually. That's, that's a trippable offense. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know that whole like I want my mullet back trend. Uh, that's what I learned because the girls team did that. You know, like where they were in their equipment flowing, throwing their hair around. I learned that if you're bad at hockey, that you like tend to have your hair down over your name bar. Yeah. If you're good, like the style is like you just keep it in your helmet basically. That's how you differentiate a duster from a good player in <laughs> women's hockey. <laughs> <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. No, it's true. Out there. Flows out. So that's like the equivalent to a guy Taping doing the what? Ankles. That's, like a, that's like a silver cage for guys. <laughs> you just like if you see someone out there in a silver cage, the likelihood that they're a bender is high. No, or or if a guy would like keep his glasses on under his cage, oh. play with his glasses. <laughs> I could see Lawson doing yeah, that. Yeah, I could see that too. Oh no, no, I didn't even need glasses until. Uh, until superior i don't know how you <laughs> i don't know how you played college hockey would you yeah glasses would you have been blown up if you like if you didn't have glasses or contacts or i guess contacts you played with nothing like that probably like you could have been 10 times better you could have <laughs> been in the pros <laughs> if you would have put some contacts in you could see the neutral zone <laughs> yeah i got i got cut that's why i got cut couldn't see out there <laughs> <laughs> Coach, I'll put contacts in. but no scoring on the I wrong think, net uh, <laughs> Coach, i get extra strong contact i Please. think there was times where i thought that I can't see too clearly, you know, but at least the ice is white and the puck is black and the other team's jerseys stand out where like, I can, there's not no point see where shapes. I can't see anything. Shapes and colors. But maybe, maybe uh, those contact lenses would have helped me make some better breakout. The stretch pass, I was never good at hitting those stretch wheel on the far blue line. I couldn't see them. It's all right. It didn't help in that game either, putting contacts in. So yeah. I think you're fine. Yeah, we'll let it slide. Just we're just looking out for you in your professional career. That Maybe you would have been the first guy with with glasses to make the show. <laughs> Big <laughs> spectacles, playing like with glasses. Ones. And you'd have glasses under your visor. You'd be on the blue line with Faber right now. Yeah, you and Brock will be wearing glasses. You could have opened up a a lane for kids that didn't want to get into the sport because they got to wear glasses. <laughs> you could have been goggles. that trailblazer. I don't know if uh, I don't know if doing that would have been worth the. Hundreds of chirps I would get each and every game. Oh yeah, people would've would been. just rip me apart. Yeah, but then if you're good, like then it's you'd respectable. You'd be the face. You'd, you'd have bobbleheads with glasses. The fans would wear glasses, glasses to games. Yeah. There'd be eighteen thousand brothers. Like that. Exactly, Hanson yeah. brothers. There'd be eighteen thousand people with your replica glasses on. I think there should. And then be we call you Specs. <laughs> specs. I would. If I could like remold my hockey brand, <laughs> like as a player, I would have gone with that. I think that would have been fun. Starting in junior and just been specs, specs and the league would be talking about specs on Winkler. And oh, then God, we're playing specs this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> that guy can see the ice. <laughs> yeah. Dude, his vision is amazing. We got to go get a, a time machine and bring you back to your your Winkler days. Four eyes. You would have been number four. Your, <laughs> <laughs> four eyes specs. There you go. You could have had some cool celebrations where you could have like taken your glasses off, wiped oh, them yeah. on your jersey, and put them back on. <laughs> oh, endless. Harry Potter. What it could have been, man. Yeah, you could have rode your stick around. <laughs> 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 the magic man. Yeah. Oh, boy. So let's talk about this team. I don't know this team. Do you know this team? This team that I don't know, but I kind of know what we're going after. Frizz, you take this away because this is a giant accomplishment. And there's actually two that you wanted to touch on. Yeah, a couple stick taps for uh, some Canadian teams. Uh, our good friend who is from this city, Brandon Manitoba, Brandon. the AAA team, went 52-0. and 0. Stick taps. <laughs> they did not lose a single game this year. And 52. Th that is pretty crazy. And uh, same goes out to the University of New Brunswick. Uh, they also never lost a game this year, Ooh. and in their championship series, they didn't get scored on a single time. <laughs> oh, and the goalie for that team was my goalie in uh, when I was in Kelowna at POE. Stick taps to you too Crazy. for making them All good. Right, those wow, guys yeah. uh, going pro from that team then. Well, they're so like that league is all like ex OHL guys, like twenty. They're all like twenty two, twenty three, mm -hmm. twenty four, OHL, WHL guys. Yeah. So now they'll probably like you can you can go play in the coast and then come back and mm. just join the team. Crazy. Yeah. I don't care regardless of what age, 
what league? If you go undefeated in the season, that's a good accomplishment. Yeah, yeah Congrats, boys. not getting scored on in the finals, like that's nuts. Yeah, and shout out to uh, to Grinelli on spitting chiclets, but he brought up. I saw their debate on it of you know would that team then beat the NCAA champion because Ooh. we're talking same age players roughly. NCAA would be a tad younger, but same age, best of the best, the American best versus Canadian best. Uh, obviously, Biz being Canadian was all for uh, New Brunswick winning that battle, but Grinelli was saying the college team would, and I would be so interested to see, but I think, I feel like I just have to side for the college team, yeah. like Division One team. It's like, think of like Boston. NCAA? Yeah, like think about Boston College. Yeah, their players are younger, but those are guys are going to the show. They're all first round picks. And these guys from the OHL are older. They're unreal. They they were really good. And who knows? Maybe a twenty five year old that's a vet from the O is just as good as a eighteen year old in NCAA like skill guy. Maybe mm-hmm. that player is like just as effective in college. But it's hard to I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah. I think it'd be a great. Think? I think it shouldn't be decided in one game. It should be best of three, <laughs> just like you guys do in the office. Yeah, the only way that that uh, Canadian team would win is based off physicality. Only way, only way. Yeah. I think the college would win just because, like, when you think of what we were just talking about earlier, how some of those players are going to go right to the NHL. Like, I don't know. I just think that. Yeah. I just think that the college, even if they're younger, more skilled. So NCAA. NCAA. Because they're both colleges. Okay, yeah, NCAA. I hope cool. somehow it happens. Spank them. Cool. <laughs> Spank them. No. NCAA All yeah. Stars yeah. versus U Sports All Stars. Yeah, they should do that for like a charity scouting combine. Some the old old guys showcase. waiting for their just their phone call. They're waiting on their phone call. But the thing is that showcase is the World Juniors, basically, and all the best Canadian players are brutal, not in U Sports. Exactly. Yeah, none of them are. <laughs> there's no. There's never someone from U Sports in Canada that would. Uh, so that helps the NCAA winning argument. Yeah. Also, probably why those U Sports people could care less about a showcase. They've already decided they're. I mean, there's some that move on to the coast and actually want to do that, but. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. It's a very, it'd be very fun to watch, but money's on. NCAA. Maybe there's some Brandon Wheat Kings AAA players that are hopefully going to be coming down in NCAA. Oh, there yeah. will be. There was, uh, I don't know, you guys get into it, but there was also two other Manitoba players on the AAA, Winnipeg kids. AAA is high school, right? Yeah. It's like 16, or yeah, fif- 16 to eight, 17 or something. It's like three years. Well, like, I don't know, 16 to 18, whatever. Um, they got, like, 180 points in the AAA league. 52 games? One guy got, I think one guy scored 100 goals. Dang. Wow. On the Bruins, Manitoba Bruins. That's AAA? Yeah. Like, ban- is that Bantam age? No, AAA. Like, oh. U8, like, wild. Oh, yeah, like, we're talking midget hockey. Yeah, the midget. midget AAA. That's what it is. Gosh, I get Do most kids who are, like, sick in that triple a league look to go major junior or well, like nolan patrick crushed it they but they don't look that, that far points. ahead honestly they, they look, look they look for junior, junior hockey junior first a. junior a or dub that's kind of what they're do they move to the states usually for like if they're going to a good junior a team not when i played everyone that was good from midget triple a I suppose you're only allowed a couple imports either. Well, so yeah, yeah, they would go from Makes they sense. would go from there to junior hockey in Manitoba, and then if they really wanted to go to the U.S., they'd play like a year there, and then they go to the Null. My couple of my buddies did that, but none of my teammates went straight to the U.S. Okay, actually, Wade Allison went to. He went somewhere. Omaha? He actually he went to Omaha. Yeah, he went to Omaha after midget. Yeah. Yeah, he did go to. There's some weird paths out of there. There's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of paths. That's what I was just yeah, wondering. Like, what's lanes. in the mindset of like a triple A player in Canada on an undefeated team? Yeah, <laughs> I think you got to prove yourself. They probably think they're going to the show. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. It's like I think that I think a lot of them try to like really get excited about it and make the jump to the WHL. Yeah, because at that age in, in Manitoba, you're so excited about 
oh, I'm got drafted. Oh, I'm good enough. Oh, I'm in grade yeah. 11 or 12. I can kind of show to my friends and stuff. Like I got to the dub and I it's think a lot, yeah, I think a lot of them go that path. Um, unless you're like really developing, thinking yeah. of the longer game and do junior and then college. But I think times have changed too for those kids and versus when I played mindsets a little bit different. Yeah. So. What did Austin Matthews do? What I didn't write that. But what did he no like <laughs> junior? I didn't write that. He went oh. to NTDP. Oh yeah. And then right. he went to lit it up though. Then he, he went to Europe. Went, went to, to Switzerland. Yeah. He had the at that time he set the record which got broken I think by Keller, to which got broken. Did again. he play for like Junior Coyotes or something growing up or what was He's, the program down there? Yeah, it, it, yeah, it was something Junior Coyotes Wolfpack. I don't know. Oh, it was yeah. the the Bobcats, Bobcat. Arizona Bobcats. Yep. Dude, I remember playing against that yeah. team. I can the picture the jerseys. Yeah, but he he's almost uh, whatever approaching a milestone. I I guess it's a milestone. Doesn't happen often. What's today's he at? game? So like sixty one, I think. Sixty one, roughly nine games left. He's at fifty nine. Just kidding, fifty nine. For some reason, I thought he broke sixty, but I thought knows. so too. According to the site, 59. 59. So he's got to he got to put some pucks in the net in the next 9 games. He's going to have to. So 70. It's that's a that's a really selective club. He's got 12 games to score 11 goals. It's possible, dude. That guy had three hat tricks in like 9 games, I think. I don't know. I remember there was a time where he had like three hat tricks in a month and that was crazy news. But yeah, if he gets a 70, that wow. like I don't that does not come around often at all. And then as soon as you start doing the math, you know, if you're in his head being like, all right, 12 goals, 11 games, and then you don't score in the 11th, you know, 10, goal, 10 games, 12 goals, and then you keep going, you, you kind of uh, – you, you psych yourself out a, a little you bit. You think he's going to psych himself out? <laughs> I, think it, I think it naturally happens. I just think when crazy you have that, point streaks are When you have that yourself. ticking timeline and – Games are, you got to score X amount in these games, and usually, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think know get how it. much he's thinking about his personal goals. I think he wants the team to win. True. If and if he has that, if he's not like thinking of that number in the back of his head, then yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying. Like that could definitely go to your head and be like stress you out. Yeah, like games. you really need <laughs> to hit it. Like, yeah, I need three goals this game, or else <laughs> like way off pace. Yeah. All I gotta say is, um. A lot of these players, if you get close to your incentive on your contract, that would get in their head. But, like, he's definitely broke his any yeah. sort of goal incentive, so I don't think he really cares, honestly. He's just setting the bar higher for his the for, next storm. For next season. He probably <laughs> yeah. doesn't want to score because yeah, of that. exactly. <laughs> That's another way to think about it, too. But, yeah, I don't know. He, If you're a Toronto player right now, I think you, like, th- you got a lot of <laughs> pressure on you <laughs> closing the season out. You pass the puck. To yeah. 34. Yeah, you just put the puck in the net. Hey, Austin, I'm going to get you the puck. You shoot. We're hitting 70. Yeah. And we're losing in the first round. That would be that would be the worst case scenario if, if Matthew hit 70 goals, but they lose first round. Sweep. Oh, yeah, that'd we, be tough. That'd be tough. Yeah, this, I don't know, could this be the year that the Canadian team wins a cup? I think it's the best chance Best chance because there's been in a long more time. Because there's more <laughs> yeah. teams that yeah. <laughs> actually made it. The only bad Canadian team is Montreal. Ottawa is Calgary pretty – okay, there's three, sorry. Half of them are good, like Ottawa actually stinks. good. Ottawa stinks. Um, Calgary stinks. Yeah, so yeah. like obviously there's Toronto in the east, but they're lined up against Florida. So if the playoffs started today, they're lined that up sucks. against Florida. I want Ooh. Panthers to win. That would be a hard, I don't hard think series. Toronto's winning if they play the Panthers. I mm. don't. It, Those guys are rough down there. Kachuk leading the charge. They can't find a, a. They just can't find themselves in a spot Who where do the uh, Leafs they can maybe get past that first round. Who do the Leafs match up well against? I think it'd be a great series against Carolina. Skill on skill. Yeah. Yeah, I think Toronto's got the better skill. And then. <laughs> dude i got know. panthers one of the whole thing so if they match up against toronto first round that's a sweep matthew sweep. still hits 70 and then in the west we got my jets and 
They've kind of been hurt in the last few games here. Bad time. What's going on up in Winnipeg? Bad time is slump. And obviously there's... And they'd get to play the the lousy avalanche. (laughs) Yeah, the Nate Dog and the boys, those guys are heating up. Same with Dallas. They're absolutely heating up. And then you just never know what the duo in Oil Town are going to be doing in the playoffs. I think we're set for a pretty pretty entertaining... S- Let's not even call it a duo, because they got a 51-goal score in Zach Hyman. Mm. That is correct. <laughs> they <laughs> they got, got a they, trio this they year. They got other people putting the puck in the net. 51 goals, 35 of them were scored in the crease. Wow. He <laughs> knows his role. <laughs> front office. <laughs> Insane. Yeah, he's just been finding that. But maybe that's their little – they needed someone like that. And uh, for you forwards here in the fan club room, why is that uh, significant or what does that mean, you know, when when you have that stat of scoring in the crease? It means he's just a lunch pail kind of guy, lunch bucket. You can take a beating because you know those D-men are just slashing you, cross-checking you, trying to move you out of the way. Coaches always say if you're in a little goal slump, go hang out by the net. (laughs) Dirty goal. (laughs) Yeah, always. And you shovel that thing in. 35, though, that's insane. 35 in that same little area. Yeah, tipping pucks, putting rebounds in, just a hard bottom hand. Yeah. It's just funny well because deserved like for that kid. That that is like when you actually think about scoring a goal, that might be the easiest just sitting in front. I saw his shot total. He had two shots outside of the circles all year. What? So two. he just gets it, man. Yeah. He gets what he's gotta he do. He knows his job. <laughs> and that guy has been like grinding it out for so long since he was on the Leafs. Thirty one years old. And no. all of a sudden he just rips fifty one. Same with that guy on uh, same as Sam Reinhardt. Yeah, Reinhardt. He's, He's fifty-one goals it. also. Yeah, that guy. Like, who would have thought Sam Reinhardt and Zach Hyman are the two people behind Austin Matthews in goals? Nobody, no one yeah, on this earth. That is a crazy they have six list. more goals than McKinnon and Pasta. I'm and telling you guys, we are McDavid. set for uh, this. Could be the best playoffs in in a decade. You calling it, man? I'm He's calling, calling it. it. Hey, if you're calling that, you better get a bracket together for everybody. I'm excited to get the bracket rolling. I checked the if the playoffs started today. Every day, <laughs> you're going to be the day. bracketology guy. You're going to come in with your hot facts every day. Yeah, I'm excited for it. I think we should uh, truly watch some playoff hockey together. Which uh, let's just go hard into it. You know. I'm down. <laughs> you got the cooler? Yeah, sure, buddy. I'll bring a cooler <laughs> if you want me to. I think we should uh, really make it interesting. I think you guys do I'm ready to put put money down and make some bets. And Whoever's make team fun. goes the furthest, <laughs> wins something. Yeah. Oh, we can do a money pool, and then we'll do a pool with our fans for a prize. Yeah. That would be fun. Yeah, doing something like that. We did one last year, and it got like 200 entries roughly, and – the people that it's always the people that. it's great it's idea. literally always the people that just bet on one team they just love a team so last year for example was seattle like the top 10 people were like eight of them were seattle fans and then some were vegas and, and they just bank the on crack that and team beat the abs. Yeah. yeah and then the crack and go to the conference final <laughs> so no they didn't we they should didn't? do uh yeah oh, we whoops, should do vegas dallas we were oh, there my bad <laughs> Yeah, for as we should do uh, our, our like our community bracket with a hoodie, like for a winner that would get a lot of people entering. Winner something like that gets a hoodie, um, and then yeah, we can do something too between us five. But uh, a hoodie and some some objects from the shelf, the million dollar shelf. Yes, yes. that'd be sweet. Oh, Pacey texted me. He must be getting a hold of all of us right now. <laughs> Our possible interview guest is a maybe. Yeah. Not fully committed. <laughs> but he he's a maybe, but Yelly got us a guest, right? No, I guess you missed that too. <laughs> you you weren't there. there. Same he's exact a definite no. Same exact trajectory as kind of what might be happening here. Um he's unable to for It's tough. It's getting that time of year. Yeah, they don't want distractions. Yeah, something like that. Well, I mean Vegas especially, there aren't like even a lock yet for playoffs. They're still fighting mm. to stay in. Mm-hmm. But I, th- you gave a hint about who we're talking about. I don't know. They're fighting for it. They're clawing away. Come on, Vegas. But yeah, um, we d- we will have someone call in later. TBD. True. Another professional will be calling into the show shortly. 
Yeah, very shortly. Very shortly. For a little ketchup. Yeah, with all, the, with all this playoff talk coming on. Outside of it, we'll we'll turn it to uh, my brother's name, Macklin Celebrini. Oh, so <laughs> confused! I, I didn't the know heck where you, you were saying there. there. Yeah, that was Celebrini. What an interesting transition. Yeah. But yeah, let's yeah, talk go about for him. it. Um, you, I think you know most about him. Yeah, I know a lot about Take this kid floor. actually because my brother actually uh, he's been telling me about this Macklin Celebrini guy because he actually played for the Chicago Steel, which is in Geneva, Illinois, which is where I grew up, and at that time. My brother was still living in Geneva, so we watched this kid play back then, and now he's going to be the top prospect for next year. Pretty, basically a lock for number one draft pick who, uh, at this rate, there's a high chance that he might be next to Bedard out there. Either that or San Jose, most likely. Do you think we'll see Celebrini play at the Frozen Four here? Yeah, I want to. That'd be pretty sick. Um we're definitely going to do an internal college bracket as well. We won't do that one with everybody, but... I think we will see him, yes. That starts tomorrow. I think so. All, think right. Of, all right. Yeah, I think you're definitely going to see him because their division that they're playing through, I think they're going to have no problem with it. Go to the Frozen Four. Yeah, yeah to the Frozen Four. You're so that'd be... Right. Well, do they end up playing the other Boston team? No. No. Not in the... They'll meet him in the... Frozen Four, I believe. Okay. They play uh, RIT. The they got RIT, oh, Omaha. My boy, Grady Hobbs. Either the Gophers or Omaha. And then Gophers or Omaha. So I think maybe the – I don't even know how good the Gophers are this year. They Gophers were are good. They were hot, and then they slipped towards the end. So you never know. Yeah. It's tough because – They like, got some good players. Yeah, Gophers. I don't know. Omaha looks like they're playing well, and it sounds like the Gophers are slipping a little bit. So that will be a good series. Don't well. take my word for it. I don't know. Good game. Much. I, mean, I don't know I much think about college. Omaha, Omaha – um, they're playing well. One thing that happens though to that team is the, you know, those those young guys that have come from the Big Ten and from BU, BC. It's such a different game because the NTH is usually older, less like high high end skill, but typically more developed, older, and just it's just actually a way different game. So then you'll play against these incredibly skilled teams that will pass behind their back and do things that these D-men on Omaha, like, they're not seeing that all year. Yeah. And typically, like, I always, uh, well, they, I mean, they never made it this far, but it, it's something that catches you off guard so much. It's really hard to adjust to that. Um, so that's why I think BU especially will. Sometimes, though, the. <laughs> You gotta oh, grind out those wins. Scary. It sounded like <laughs> this, I thought this you were stopping me from yeah, that. Yeah, that was a long S. Like, sounded like, like a yeah, well, I thought you were gonna pause and then. I think like I was gonna <laughs> say something. <laughs> well, didn't Quinnipiac win last year, which is like an equivalent to I don't know if Omaha is equivalent, but that's like kind of what you said. The old it's an older old dogs. Won. Yeah. It's well, like yeah. Like look with the squad, the bulldogs. Uh-huh. Bulldogs won it too. back to back. Yeah, they're old, and that's what you always see in the tournament. Is you see the old dogs versus the. Number one draft pick, Celebrini. Yeah, exactly. I can. That's what makes and it's interesting. But yeah, so this we we'll already know the Frozen Four matchups. Um, yeah, we will when this uh, episode is out. But if you had to make a prediction for your team to be to make the Frozen Four, who are we thinking? Not win it, just make the Frozen Four. We got Boston College, Michigan Tech, Wisconsin, Quinnipiac, Michigan State, Western Michigan, North Dakota, Michigan, Boston University, RIT, Minnesota, Omaha, Maine, Cornell, and Denver, UMass. I know that's a lot of teams. Okay. But you got to pick one team to make the Frozen Four. I know who he's picking. He's the one guaranteed team to make yep. it? Just but pick one. Okay. Then we'll do a – yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think, you don't I know think in that yeah. division, North Dakota yeah, should North make Dakota. it. You think so? Yeah. Michigan they didn't State, look good. Michigan yeah. State's dang good. I obviously want North Dakota to win the national championship, but if I'm going to make a bet right now, I'm betting Denver's going to the Frozen Four. Yeah. That's yeah, they're good. That's BC. Maine's good, though. Yeah, if I'm taking one team, BC for sure. Okay, maybe this is a terrible because I think everyone would pick the one seed. So, yeah, that was oh, <laughs> I didn't even, know, I didn't even know it was a one seed. Dude, I is, just uh, looked at this. Yeah, is Celebrini on BC or BU? BU. Oh, shnikes, because I always root for McGophers just because my dad's old roommate is a coach there. But 
Moscow, Moscow, Bob. But I don't know. I can't root against Celebrini now. I've hated the Gophers since uh, kids our age started committing there. <laughs> so I hope they lose to Omaha. Okay. Fair. Yeah. Gophers are dream crushers. It's all <laughs> Minnesota youth. Can I put in my Frozen Four, four teams, Will? Yeah, yeah. That might be more fun. Okay. My my four teams were going to go Boston College, mm. Denver's going to be there, BU is going to be there, and then Michigan State. So you picked all four top four ranked teams. <laughs> hot take, <laughs> hot take. <laughs> <laughs> all the numbers I'll go off, off the going. grid here. I'm going to go – I don't even know if this is off the grid. I'm going to go North Dakota just because it would be fun seeing all the fans there and for Cuddy's sake. BU for Celebrini. <laughs> hey, boy. <laughs> Denver. Denver and uh, BC. <laughs> <laughs> very very similar to Lawson's <laughs> top four. College hockey is hard because there's only 16 teams in the tournament. Dude, honestly, I think this bottom left, like Michigan, North Dakota, that's Western Michigan, one. Michigan State, I think that's kind of hard. It is. Because at least, like, some of these, like, top right, like, I don't know. You're I'm really, you're really down on, like, Cornell, aren't you? Cornell yeah. and Maine. That's I'm going to do boring. a sneaky one to the right just because I'm – Favoring the two guys I played with, both in Dauphin. It's going RIT. RIT, we got Grady Hobbs, my billet brother. Hobbs plays there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's going to take down Celebrini first period. That's <laughs> And then man. we got North Dakota, Reese Gaber. So those my two at the bottom, and then go up, please. You're sir. going Wisco, I bet. And then uh, I'll go Denver. I think Denver's pretty sweet. And then uh, uh, this is just going to be a wild guess, but... I think Quinnipiac is hungry for another one. I like that. I like that. I think BC is going to take it home overall. Tuck? They're nasty. Isn't Tuck's brother on that team? I think so. One of the beat Boston's. I don't know. Little Tuck. He's going to go play for Buffalo too. I think Michigan is going to come out of the bottom. I think the Gophers are going to beat BU. And God, then Denver, Ten, hey. Denver and BC – from the top, and then I don't know what the heck. I, I would just guess BC would win, but I would like to see. It a would Big be Ten pretty show. fun to see two. I like when two uh, young skilled teams in college play each other in the final. Mm-hmm. BC BU. It's a fast game. Yeah. Unlike the NHL, where they're it's just grind in the playoffs, grind. This could be like a <laughs> seven six ball game. It would be pretty cool to see Gophers, North Dakota, because that place would be so freaking I know. If crammed. it's here, too. That's why I want the Gophers to go. Yeah, because it's here. That's the only reason. There. Just because it's, yeah, it's here. Gophers, North Dakota. That would, the, that would be the coolest end result ever. Gophers, Is it possible? North Dakota. Oh, yeah. It's very possible. I think they did that on purpose. Mm-hmm. Unless they play <laughs> each other in the semis. I don't know how that works. No, they wouldn't. Uh, oh, unless they re Do they re I don't know if they re-rank. Uh-uh. They so don't? They definitely can. They could meet in the final. Mark that in, gentlemen. Pencil in North, North Dakota, Dakota Gophers championship, championship. game. Should we go April 13th, 5 p.m., St. Paul, Minnesota. That's See you there. too good to be true. Would you have your whole family come down? Your dad would come down. Hey, <laughs> Rob? I Robert. probably wouldn't even get a ticket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're yeah. going to go there. Yeah, Quaylen Jack, I was talking yeah, to him he yesterday. He said he dropped 500 on him. Yeah. On Tickets. Without Jeez. knowing who's actually yeah. going. Yeah, that's insane. Well, it's different for him because he lives here, and I don't think he's got a team. I don't know. I'm just saying, yeah, I'm not dropping 500 come bucks on. a ticket. Do it. Uh, come on. Come on. Yeah. Do Unless it. I get a You're a fake Sue fan if you don't. <laughs> yeah, that's t- yeah. Fake fighting hawks. Fake fan, fake fan. I'll cross that bridge when I, I get there. Well, it'll be interesting. We'll see it now. We'll have to update you next week on uh, who actually made the Frozen 4. But yeah. I'm excited to watch tomorrow actually. Yeah. Game start at 4 o'clock tomorrow. B U R I T. Perfect. We can watch it after no, work then. No, 1 p.m. <laughs> 1 p.m. <laughs> right, buddy? Yeah. Denver and Mass play at 1 tomorrow. Oh, nice. We'll Even def- better. <laughs> we'll definitely watch it after work. <laughs> we'll definitely watch it all day. <laughs> Rocky <stuff>. guys. <laughs> of course we're going to watch the Frozen Forward. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's send it over to our Southern Professional Hockey League All-Stars, Troy McTavish and Johnny Pace. Should I just do one for just Johnny in case Troy doesn't come? I think he is. I told them both. You guys want to do the game now? Game after it what? You have it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, boys, it was great chatting with you and uh, super fun. 
glad to see they're doing well. Hope they they can uh, make a run here in playoffs and uh, maybe we'll get down there. Who knows? Yeah, they're still the same old, same old. It's just nice. I to think see. we actually wait for the outro because they might have something funny we can talk about. Pacer. Okay. I mean, okay. yeah, we're gonna be here anyways, talking yeah. to them. So yeah, or we could do the game with them even too. How long do you want them to have them on? What's the no. game? Same thing. Yeah, just then no. the game's uh, not the game's not for the fans to see us gaming. It's for the for you page. So it won't be hard to edit too if they are. Yeah, true. Good thing you got a long screw them. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do the no bet hockey questions with them then. That's it. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. What's it like? Well, Cuddy, let's get into the game. I Wait, you know, to do this. earlier today we played a different game with a different host on a different show. The Jason Show. <laughs> Jason Show. Which is a local slash not local talk show. Very not local. Oh, no, he said it's in a, yeah, ten he, he said it's in like 11 cities around America. It's in Illinois because my parents watched it today. Sweet. Yeah, we were on uh, our first talk show at a little 10-minute segment, which was super fun. And we stumped jason on a few hockey terms and uh yeah talked about the hockey guys no bad the fan club yeah it was, it was cool great. experience pretty smooth we did not get stumped by his uh 80s trivia I think. Uh, we got it man no, five brains five brains i think we beat him out though frizz got one he you knew got one, or i did someone else got well, one. i guess when he said single <laughs> i think that was made up jason. yeah i didn't know that one <laughs> I just guessed something to do with music, so I was like half right. I don't know. He but fell out of fun. his chair when you knew that the JR thing. Yeah, was couldn't believe legit. that I knew that. That is such a backdoor, like subconscious memory <laughs> in my head that I'd never think about Left ever. Rear lobe. I don't yeah. know how. Like I've never heard of that show I mean, ever. Lobe Dallas. Turner. It's a famous, never famous heard of it. show. Never heard of it. You must yeah. have been. I'd Must never even 40. seen the show. My dad told me about it one time in the car. We were talking about it for like 20 minutes, and he said that it's a famous quote. That's why they used it, I guess, and it just somehow, some way, psychologists, brain studies people can figure out why I remembered that, how it stored in my head, but I was able to get it Because your old man told you. You never forget anything your old man tells you. Exactly. Like father, like son. You guys are both <laughs> <laughs> well, well aged. <laughs> Uh, well versed in TV as well. Yeah, yeah, that's for so sure. Cool. Yeah, Jason, <laughs> thanks for having us on. Just want to touch on that, and uh, we'll definitely be sharing the link too to the full 13 minute segment. It's on YouTube, but 100. We'll share it out. Well, let's send this episode down to Birmingham, Alabama, so we can check in with a couple of the fellas. Hello, Johnny and Taver. Are you there? We're here, boys. What's going on? How are you guys check doing? In. You got a nice. Uh, Nice day down there in Alabama. Yeah, it's actually beautiful. Blue sky, sunny, birds are chirping. Just looking out the window right now. I don't know where to look because <laughs> we're videoing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're good. I want to. I want to look at. I want to look at your guys' faces, but I, I, I'm right now. I'm looking at a fucking parking lot or something. Yeah, awesome. you should have put up a couple photos of us. <laughs> Just look at your feet, Johnny. <laughs> So we should have done that, like uh, like how they did it when we were in Columbus. So they just put our <laughs> our faces on the goalpost. <laughs> yeah, Johnny and Taver, if it's so nice there today, why aren't why aren't you golfing today? Because you were golfing yesterday. Yeah, we played yesterday. Um, I dummied Johnny in a match, <laughs> and today today we knew that this was coming. So it's actually a beautiful day to golf. It's a little windy. It looks like there's a there's a uh, county fair in our parking lot of the rink that we're staring at right now. So we might have to pop over there later. <laughs> that uh, was... I got some deep fried Oreos, deep fried Oreos the day before a game. That sounds ideal. How's your swing, Johnny? Picking up the golf Stop. game? Uh, it's, 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 my swing still looks like my flap shot. Hmm. Hard. Not good. I gotta say, uh, hard Johnny's and wild. Been Johnny's been playing some pretty good golf. We played uh, we played a nice course on Sunday, and um, his game's actually been pretty good. So I, I can't complain. Birmingham Golf and Country Club. I had to uh, I had to sharpen up my tools uh, before we went there. Yeah, we were a little out of place there. <laughs> were you wearing like a Hawaiian shirt or something? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we dressed nice. One of our owners was nice enough to invite us out for a round, so we had to we had to dress the part and everything. It was a nice. 
That's yeah. awesome. So, boys, tell tell the listeners a little bit. How how's the second year, full year down there been? Um, what uh, what's different from this year? And uh, I guess overall, just how's it going playing for the Birmingham Bulls again? Honestly, like me, me and Taver love it down here. Um, it's uh, I, I think I think it's a little better this year. Like we we kind of fig- like last year was a lot of figuring it out. You know, we're we're both I would say pretty nervous last year. You know, it's our first year pro, and we just kind of wanted to do our best to stick around, do our job on, on the ice. And I think this year, uh, personally, we both really found our games I think and uh, you know a little more comfortable and we know what to do day in and day out kind of thing and um, kind of know how things work a little bit better this year so um, a little a little more laid back away from the rink I would say this year like last year like I, I didn't unpack until I, I ever actually last year <laughs> I, I, was, I was ready to go at any any moment last year, and kind of kind of kept that tradition a little bit going this year too. I still got one bag packed, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's going good. We got a good squad this year, and um, our team's doing really well. We're in, uh, we're in first place right now, so we're hoping to hoping to hold that position uh, going into playoffs. Yeah, I'm doing well too, boys. And, uh, <laughs> I haven't got cut yet this year, so uh, <laughs> made it this far. And like Johnny said, we have a good squad, and the organization, you know, getting better each year. We're getting treated really, really well, just like last year. But there's always a couple extra things they add every year, so it's been good so far. Yeah, and, and Birmingham is a pretty cool spot to play. Like we were talking about earlier, like the weather down here is pretty unbeatable. Like neither of us have seen snow in the last two years, which is unreal. Um, <laughs> So that's like the locate the location of it's just a bonus, and you know Nashville's only a hop, skip, and a jump away too. So, and you're right across from the rink this year, right? You're you moved places. Oh, hey, Fred. Well, it's, I yeah. I have to hold the phone, so it's like kind of hard for me to like go back and forth. So, I'll chime in when I can. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, we're. Uh, Actually, I live in. We have kind of two places where the players are split up. So um, I'm at the same place as last year, but Johnny, I'm at his place right now, and we can we can look and we can see the parking lot and the rain from here. So it's pretty convenient. Yeah, I got I got put into better apartments. That's what happens when you don't go to a coast camp at the beginning of the year. Ooh. So what? Uh, yeah. Was there a little bit of little was there a little bit of heartbreak for this is the first year you guys haven't lived together in quite some time. Yeah, I mean, I didn't I didn't expect uh, them to put us together this year. Obviously, I came down a little later than Pacer, um, but they kind of told us that we weren't going to be living together, but it's a little different. Um, but I got good roommates, and he's got good roommates, so... You've had a few roommates this year. Yeah, I've been through quite a few roommates, <laughs> but I've got two guys now that are pretty solidified, so it's, it should be good for the rest of the year. Do you, not, you don't miss having to wake up Johnny for practice? Hey, that was only a handful of times. <laughs> a handful. A handful. Um, and another big thing this year is Johnny has his own car for once. Hey. Wow. So, I forgot he could drive. I know, right? I don't think I've ever oh, seen yeah. Johnny it's, drive. Um, it's a be- beautiful, beautiful little Hyundai, and I've been I've been banking in those all those rides that he's owned me over oh, the last yeah. five years. So wherever we go somewhere, <laughs> he's driving, and it's been really nice. Yeah, we, we discussed that. I owe him this is our <laughs> fifth year playing together. And I owe him four years of ride. Johnny, wow. so, so you don't, so you don't gotta man. you don't gotta borrow a Macker's minivan anymore. <laughs> no, no, or or your truck. I, actually, yo, you you lent me your truck quite a few times in college. I remember. Yeah, I guess you owe me a few rides too. <laughs> uh, okay, on my way home this year, I'll come pick you up. I'll take you for a joyride. <laughs> Deal. And then head back home. Deal. <laughs> he owes everyone a couple rides. He owes me a center console in the car, too, and he still hasn't fixed that, so we're working on that part. Uh, I put grip tape on it. should be good. <laughs> hey, what you guys uh, – what are your thoughts on the little surprise package we sent you, all the goodies? Oh, we got a good kick out of that. 
uh, especially the, uh, what was that, the half-eaten CBD gummies. <laughs> Were they rock solid? <laughs> There's the culprit laughing. That uh, and then that that Stilly hat is a it's a golf hat, but it's a vodka brand. So I thought you didn't you guys okay. would enjoy that. <laughs> we are we already donated that to a teammate. Yeah, no, thanks 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 for the treat, for us. We uh, we figured that there would be some some gag gifts in there, and all there was was uh, I tried some of those stale sour candies that you sent, and uh, yeah, they were. They were all right. Yelly's yeah, been crushing them all those week. Have been in the office. Those have been in the office for, what, two years? Yeah, basically. They expire this July, so we're trying to get rid of them. Oh, yeah, but eat up, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a good two-year shelf life. Oh, yeah. Hey, how, how are you guys been? How are things going? Pretty good. Just got through another blizzard up here, so definitely jealous of the golf weather down there. Um... Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, just figuring out some things. We got the Frozen Four coming up, and uh, a few guys are gonna have oh, to. Oh, nice. Are you guys going to that? Yeah, it's actually here in St. Paul, so we'll be there. Oh, perfect. Johnny, I wanted. Convenient. To... Johnny, I wanted to. Uh, yeah. Ask you about your uh, your injury that you went through. Uh, tell us the story about that, because I don't know exactly what happened. Oh yeah, well. Surprise, surprise, I got injured again. Um, <laughs> this time, uh, the, uh, the being out period wasn't too, too long, but uh, we were playing in Pensacola on a Friday night, and uh, we were on the penalty kill, and the puck went up to the point. The D-man walked right down, and I was kind of the only guy there, so I stood in front of it and uh, wound up for a slap shot and hit me right, right on top of the gloves. Oh, and oh, man. Right away, I was like, oh, that's not good. I got, we cleared the puck. I skate back to the bench. I, I take my glove off, and my hand is literally purple in a balloon. Oh. And I, I go, I scream the F word at the top of my lungs. <laughs> and cause it, re- it really hurt. And I remember our coach heard me, he looked at me, he goes, shut up, you're fine. You're going back out there. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> and, um, and just uh, like I, I, I kind of figured it was broken. Uh, it was it was my metacarpal, so that's the bone in your hand that connects to your like pointer finger. And uh, I went for we had a game the next day uh, at home, and uh, I went for an X-ray that that Saturday morning. Uh, took some pictures of it, and it was broken. But we only had four D, so <laughs> I played that night as well. Uh, they they kind of shot it up and froze it. And uh, I couldn't, so it was my left hand, so that's my top hand. And uh, I couldn't hold my stick properly. So I was playing with my uh, my right hand as my top hand. So I was holding my stick backwards the whole game. It was God, so God. funny. Was, this like, is insane. <laughs> he was, he was uh, like you said, we were short D, and he would get put out there, and he would be holding his stick in the wrong hand with the wrong like the wrong way come on and our coach would be freaking out on the bench like why is he holding his stick like that and i was like his hand broke his hand broken and then yeah. he'd be like oh right <laughs> did you make wow. any tape to tape passes yeah, it, was, it was a tough one and i was on they put me on for one penalty kill that game too and i went to clear the puck and at the in that moment, I forgot my hand was broken as well. Oh, and I, when I went to shoot it down the ice, my hand completely gave out. And the puck went right to the guy's face, passed it across, bang in the back of the net. And I was like, oh, my God. That's the worst. <laughs> Tough goal. Especially but, especially because... Like, yeah, and then... Uh, no, go ahead. No, I was going to say, that, that's horrible. But especially because, like, half the building probably doesn't know that you have a broken hand. And people probably just think that this guy's like can't play hockey or something like that <laughs> yeah they're like did pacer just forget how to hold a hockey stick in the yeah. last 24 hours well yeah, dang man and glad, then, glad you're yeah, and then uh, ended up ended up getting surgery on it two days later they uh put a screw through my knuckle and through the bone so and then it took about took about four weeks to heal up and uh now it's pretty good 
my knuckle still turns purple from time to time, but it's all good. Is the screw still in there? Yeah, I'll uh, I could I'll send you guys a picture of uh, of the X-ray with the screw in. Thanks. <laughs> 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 Taver, uh, I'm looking. <coughs> oh, I've been looking at uh, your guys' stats a little bit throughout the year, and I noticed, according to the site, that you are leading the team in penalty minutes this year. Oh, yeah. Oh, Taver's <laughs> a tough guy. Fights? No. Nope. Any fights? You got a few fights. I think I have like I haven't had one in a while. I think I have three this year. I'm probably zero and three, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's not. I don't know how I'm leading the team in penalty minutes because I guess we don't have that many guys taking penalties because mm. I think I have like 57 and like there's guys in the league with over 200 already. So wow. I'm not necessarily like the uh, the heavyweight, but no, guys are some guys are scared of Tavor though. We were I forget who we were playing against, and Tav grabbed a guy in front of the net and he's begging him for one, just begging him, and the guy's <laughs> just shaking his head like so scared. He's like, no, no, no. And Tav, Tav was like just shaking his glove and had him by the collar, and he was ready to just piss pound him. I dropped, I dropped both of my gloves, and the linesman, you know how like they kind of just back away, and they back away for like five seconds, and then the guy wouldn't fight me, and then I had to do the, the skate of shame and go and find my gloves and put them back on. And then <laughs> I actually didn't then you end up getting a penalty somehow, so it was good. Heck yeah, you you uh you plan to continue that roughness coming uh coming into playoffs here. Or amp it up a little bit? Yeah, I, uh, playoffs, yeah, I mean, playoffs, like, we all know playoffs, there's not as much fighting and stuff, but there's definitely more physical play. So I think that's kind of one thing that Pacer and I have in common where we're both kind of bigger guys. Maybe Pacer's not as tall as me, but we're both big guys that kind of play physical, so we'll have to keep that going, going into playoffs. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. J- Johnny, I... Are you, guys, uh, are you guys able to come down at all for a playoff game? Possibly. When do, uh, we would have to look at the schedule. When uh, when it does in April. it starts in April? Yeah, like second week of April, I think. I think second week, yeah. And it's it's three or four rounds, hopefully. It would be if we three. made it all the way, then it would be three rounds. Three, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like basically, basically three three weekends in a row. Holy smokes! So you'll be done by May. Yeah, I think the last weekend of playoffs is like the first week of May. Yeah. Is this uh, is this anyone's retirement party by chance? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I it might be my it might be my swan song this year. I might uh, I might hang it up. I don't know yet, a hundred percent. But I'm in uh, I'm doing teachers college right now online. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first semester I was in full uh, full course all the classes, which as we all know, it's not the easiest to stay on top of online. Um, but I got through it, and then uh, next year I'm scheduled to kind of finish that off. So we'll we'll see. But yeah, it's looking like it could be my swan song. Well, you have to bring on the bring on the cup then, if it might potentially be the last year. Going yeah, on top. that's what uh, that's what the goal is for sure. Last year it was heartbreaking. We lost in the final. So mm-hmm. hopefully this year we can finish the job. Hey, if we win, uh, you guys got to come join us in uh, Tuscaloosa at the <laughs> University of Alabama there for a party. Yeah, I we'll think be there. there'll be a big parade too, right? <laughs> yeah, going through downtown. Heck like, yeah, love like that. A quarter, quarter let's get a mile let's probably. get a float. <laughs> Johnny, <laughs> yeah. Johnny, the THG float. We'll do it on top of Pacer's car. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't even think the couple fit on top of that. <laughs> Johnny, how's it uh, how's it been ramping up the old TikToks over the last uh, few yeah, months here? Yeah, I started getting back into that. Like like I said earlier, last year, you know, we were we were pretty. I don't want to say timid, but you know, we're we're pretty just focused on hockey and focused on doing our job here. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of feelings away from the rink, especially in the first couple months of the season. And um, you know, new team, new guys. Uh, you didn't know how the whole TikTok thing would go with them and all that. And 
Uh, I guess I kind of shot myself in the foot last year too with uh, slowing it down a lot uh, with, you know, both Instagram and TikTok. But um, this year I kind of put that aside, you know, just kind of got over it and started ramping it up again because, you know, that's, that, that's part of our lives. That's what we do uh, on the side, you know, when we're playing, right? And, um, you know, we're still still part of the whole hockey guys thing and everything like that. So I, I thought, you know what, just get over yourself, start doing it again. And, uh, you know, I'm actually really enjoying it too. So I kind of want to keep that ball rolling. And, uh, and then it helps, you know, when uh, when we rejoin you guys in the summer and doing stuff like that, right? So yeah. uh, starting to, I don't know, I just kind of one day decided, all right, that's enough. Let's, let's start doing this again. So yeah, Johnny, you're, you're that was pretty much it. people are clearly, uh, clearly liking your stuff. Um, and you said that, uh, you're kind of unsure of how your team was gonna like being comfortable doing it and stuff. So has anyone said anything then? Like, is everyone, uh, oh, no I, I, are you getting I get a, I get a few tri- I'll get a few chirps here and there for sure. But they, at the end of the day, like, I, I think they enjoy it. And the other thing too, is I, in a few videos I, I've included my teammates. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they, you know, like they're, they, they, as much as they would chirp it, they, I think they secretly like it at the end of the day too. Uh, they always get a good laugh out of it. And it's just, it's just harmless fun, right? And it was kind of like how we were when we first started. You know what I mean? Like you're kind of like, oh God. And then yeah. you do it and then it's actually a good time, right? So, um, no, they they've been really really good with it, and they're they are really supportive of it. Uh, we, like we said, like we have we have such a good group of guys down here. Like we're all we're a very tight knit group, and uh, yeah, they uh, they get a kick out of it. That's good to hear. So, are you gonna bring any of the uh, the videos then to the rink? Because I know you've done a lot at your place, pretty much. But are you gonna show some? Uh, day in the life stuff or workout stuff or anything around uh, the facility um yeah like with that because there's you know our coaching staff and then our um our team staff that, that that's there as well um I'm, i haven't really tested the waters on that yet but i think eventually uh, I might start filming it. Uh, the only thing with doing TikTok at the rink too, especially if you're doing it on TikTok, is for some reason our our Wi-Fi at the rink does not load the TikTok app at all. And I've tried to film at the rink actually, and um, I was I think I forget what sound I was doing, but I tried to film one in my stall of me lifting something, and um, and yeah, the TikTok TikTok app didn't load at all and i've tried it like probably three or four times same thing so if i film anything at the rink it would just have to be obviously on my camera and then put something together after so is uh is marty still giving you all your video ideas or are you uh on your own now (laughs) (laughs) i'm on my own i'm on my own we still talk to marty almost every day yeah i was Uh, gonna ask i was gonna ask what are you guys uh, still gaming and stuff what? I was gonna ask, like, do you guys still like game or like keep in touch and all that? Because you're, you're missing your third amigo. Yeah, yeah, big time. We don't yeah. game though. We haven't game one since zero. Yeah, man. I don't. I I left my console at home too. So, um, but yeah, like we 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 either snap them or Facetime. We snap almost every day, the both of us. Snap Marty, and then we'll Facetime them every now and then. But we're really proud of them. Like. He moved up. He's getting to play with his brother. Probably, I don't think he ever would have thought he'd be doing that in his hockey career. So I think that's special for him and his family uh, to see. So we're uh, we're really happy for him. And you know, as much as we wanted to play with him this year, like we're kind of happy he never came back. Yeah. Because we know he's living out his dream up there. So we're we're really happy for him. Yeah, we pretty much had the same same kind of feeling. We talked to Ashley Jones. When she came to uh, visit for the Minnesota high school tournament, she gets said she gets to like talk with Marty's parents all the time, and they come down, and it's great having the the family around to support. 
Oh, hey, I was going to say to you guys too, I, uh, I love what you guys are doing with the PWHL and all that and all those videos and trips out there to see them because like we said a few years ago, you know, we wanted to grow the game in the States. That was our goal and, you know, or one of our goals as the hockey guys and uh, it's nice seeing you guys do that uh, with both the men and women's game. Thank you. Yeah, it's been it's been fun. They've uh well, sorry, one of our guys disappeared, but um yeah, it's been fun. They're all really cool when when we've been uh when we've been working with them, they've all been super cool. It's almost it's easier to get them to do videos than uh yeah. NHL players and stuff like that. So it's been a ton of fun, but um yeah, I, I think, think they're more used to bringing themselves out there, you know. Like they're probably used to like having to like kind of go out of their comfort zone in order to like help grow their side of things so it's probably a little easier for like the social media side because a lot of them have been doing that for so long yeah like they're willing to show more personality yeah 100 percent. well this has been great catching up with you guys and uh we really really hope you guys go far in the playoffs and we'll hopefully uh see you guys down in birmingham sometime and then if not yeah that'd be great. who knows what comes next yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, and we're we're looking forward to seeing you guys and uh, rejoining you boys after the season. Perfect. Thanks, boys. Chat soon. Cheers, fellas. All right, let's play a game. You guys are gonna guess the top five spring break destinations for 2024. Oh, for college slash adults. Ah, hey. that was my question. Is All right. I, in the may US? I go first? Yeah, you guys. Is it U.S. <laughs> All of these are in the U.S., yes. That's a good yeah. question, Priz. That is a good question. Well, I got a bunch of guesses. Let me ready. throw <laughs> out. You wait, wait, wait. Don't just throw guesses. you got to actually think about like what you think is most popular. And well, try this, get city? Top this is one. city, correct? Bro, i got to yeah. lock right now. I don't even need lock to. Lock it. It's talk. a top five. I don't five. even need to discuss this. Oh, yeah. I know what you're going to say. Fort Lauderdale. No. Probably not oh, Ranker.com. Uh, no, this is not Ranker. It's probably Miami. How general are we talking? Okay, Miami's beaches got shut down. I don't yeah. think it's this Miami. Is, this is like New York. This awesome. is like main New page New York Times. Okay, Panama City. No, I got what? one here. I'll New York Times is Boston. a bunch of liars. <laughs> Sao Padre. No. Oh, see, Myrtle Beach. No, guys, what think about heck? like. Think about it. We are. We are. Nashville, so Tennessee. Yes. Let's go. Nashville. Nashville's number four. That's not even a number yes. one. That shouldn't even be top five. It's all beaches, but I guess not. Beaches are closed. No partying <laughs> on beaches. <laughs> yeah, honestly, if Fort now Lauderdale are gone. isn't on there, I'm kind of Well, they I'm closed kind of them. Stumped. Yeah, yeah but not. They didn't Daytona make, Beach. No. There is one beach on this list. What? Dude, No. Who's this spring, ain't the spring, spring break, break we grew up Idaho? on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, mm. is New York City a spring yes, break? Yes, New York is number Kay. one. This is, this is not college. These are some, these, yeah, I don't this know. This is going to make people mad. <laughs> Should have guessed <laughs> New York because the New York Times is trying to if it's, the numbers. If it's Vegas, too. Is it Vegas? Vegas isn't on there. Okay, no. good. That's good. Because that yeah. that's unrealistic. Austin, for Texas. College. <laughs> no. Someone show me someone that spring breaks to New York City. <laughs> I'll, show I'll, I'll show you a liar. Uh, okay, so there's one beach. Let's think of the beach. Uh, we're going Denver or Colorado <laughs> ski resort vibe. <laughs> no. Breckenridge. Um, what could I've we said Daytona? We've said the Miamis. Think so like Panama City attractions like. Disney World, to Orlando, do. yes, Disney Orlando, World, number two. All right, okay, okay. I, I think did, I did see something about Disney Spring Breakers. I thought this was for like this older isn't people. College, then. Yeah, this is college adults. New York Times must have some weird data. Yeah, I'd like to see the. So did you they're pushing count an Orlando as the beach? Or is this beach one still there? I don't know. It just said Orlando, Florida. Okay, well, there's no <laughs> beaches by. But that's there. also so Disney. So is that considered your so beach? No. Okay. There's one beach on the worst. Is beach okay. in the name of the city? No, beach is not in the name. Ah, frick. Okay. Hmm. Clearwater. No. Without no more beach. Florida. Is it L.A.? Nope. San Diego. <laughs> no. All right. Here <laughs> we go. San Diego <laughs> Zoo. <laughs> the Hamptons. No. No, I'm calling it. Well, 
it's New York. What about That's why I said uh, it. Charleston? Oh, that was in the top ten. Which oh. Charleston? <laughs> How about South the Carolina. Jersey Shore? No. Boardwalk. Wait, Charleston was what? Good one. No, well, good one. Good one. What do we top have? What do we have? Okay, you have New York at number one, Nashville <laughs> at number four, Orlando at number two. Oh gosh, we got a beach There's to two find. more. Wait, and one has a beach. Yes. Not in Florida. So is it on the west coast then, or we're still going down the east? Don't coast? tell me. No it's, more hits. It's Chicago. <laughs> is it Chicago? No. Oh, but good. Number five. Crazy. Number five is not like. It's gonna make us mad. Yeah. It more mad than mad. we are. Yeah. More mad. Boston. Than we are. Piss you right off. No. <laughs> Seattle, Washington. No. Think South. <laughs> Louisiana. Yeah. Bourbon Street. New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. Yep. Spring New Orleans. Break there. So a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of the southern okay. colleges go to New Orleans. Corpus Christi. Break. That's fair. No Texas. Okay. No Texas. I wonder where this beach is. That's where I'm curious. In think, Alabama. Think like vacations, like extreme vacation spot. Bahamas. Florida Keys. No, he said America. He said no Florida. It's in, it's in oh, America, right. but it's like a prime Cabo. state for. That's, that's Mexico. U.S. Mexico. I thought there was an island That's off Mexico. of uh, ca- California, something close. Hawaii. <laughs> yes, Hawaii. Hawaii. Who okay. are these rich kids flying to Hawaii Dang, for college? college kids got break. money these days. <laughs> yeah, That's so a that was crazy from the New York break. Times. New York Times. It wasn't. An, it wasn't. I don't know. It. It was a reliable website. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which one? You have to plug the source so we know in the comments. I gotta search it up. Let's play another <laughs> game. <laughs> We're going to blind rank springtime activities oh, for kay. college. Go to spring kids. break. <laughs> the hockey guys are going to blind rank springtime activities. Let's go. First up, we got simple nature walk. Five. Five. Okay. <laughs> five. <laughs> five. Well, I don't know. Yeah, five. We got uh, biking. Ooh, I was yeah, going to say five. at least three. I think that's better than nature walking. How much better? Either one or two. One. Of them. <laughs> yeah, I'd say three. It is better than the walking for sure. <laughs> one to two <laughs> spots better. It's it's These no more two above entertaining. A three. Uh, it's not activities. above a three. <laughs> Springtime activities for avid outdoorsmen. Uh, let's or go four at that guy. That's kind of the way I was thinking of it. We were gonna be outside, like, like if it was nice people? out. Yeah. Okay. Should we go four with biking? It's well, fun. See, what let's think. What else could be on the list? Like I'm I'm hoping well, pickleball's up there. Pickleball, probably something on the lake. Swimming, maybe. In spring, though? I would slot biking as three because you got to leave room for the four. Yeah. Because there's going to be a more boring one. There will be. <laughs> yeah, I think going for a spring bike time, p- bike ride is good. It's fun. Three. 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 All right. Fishing. Oh. First two. time on the like boat two. out in the water. Two. I like it at two. That's us saying that. Like, oh, Fishing is like so selective to a guy. When's fishing opener? Yeah, this is your this is your top oh, five. It's, oh, it's our top five. Oh man, it's more than I like fishing more than biking. So me, it's a two. Uh, you guys yeah, well, biking's three. So yeah, I'd say two. Yeah, two is fair. So you got nature walk at five, fishing at three, two, two. bikes two. at three, bikes at three. Yep. Give us some good here. One and four. We give us some fun uh, and not so fun. Cooking on the barbecue, outdoor grilling. Oh, that four. Has to be one. I think that first time you could cook outside and just standing there looking around, I think that feels incredible. Cool. Four. <laughs> <laughs> this guy would have got it. Four. I think it's like it's fine, but it's I not. I think my it would have been a good three. To do. It, it would have been a good three. You're right. So you still have number one. Yeah. Save it number one golf, for golf, last golf, again. Golf, 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 yeah. golf, golf, golf. Pickleball. Yay! Oh, that works okay, too. Yeah. That works too. Yeah, one. That's yeah. great. That's that is one. better than fishing, better than biking, grilling, and walking. Yeah, yeah. good good job. We Maybe we'll get to right. do some of those soon. It's 15 degrees out today. And snowy and icy. Yeah, good job. Uh, good job, guys. This sounds like a great spring for us. Yeah. What are we doing? We're playing pickleball. Grilling. Grilling's not too. Pickleball. Fishing. Fishing. Probably won't do any of that. Biking. <laughs> yeah. Grilling. Don't have a bike. And nature walking. Yeah. <laughs> Don't have a grill. <laughs> Don't have a grill. <laughs> Can nature walk though? Nets aren't up at the pickleball court. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks like we're stuck with five. Uh, uh, good job. Well, see ya. Is that it for the show? Actually, no. There's one more thing I want to talk about, and that is April 6th. Because if you have noticed what we are wearing right now, we have a Founders hoodie restock with multiple different colors coming. And that is April 6th, 10 a.m. Central Time. The No Bad Shop will be live. Check it out on all of our links, wherever you find this show. Um, yeah. Anyone have anything to add on that? Uh, Why are we doing this? Well, I think to add on that, these crew neck, or sorry, these hoodies at least <coughs> have uh, have gone pretty quickly too, and uh, they may or may not be the last time they're sold for founders. So <gasps> jump on it if you want your chance to grab a founders hoodie. They're sold out in like an hour in our other restock. So can't say I didn't warn you. Just as simple as that from the boss. We can't wait to pack <laughs> your orders, write you a note, and send the hoodie off with love. So thank you all for listening. Have a no bad day. And Cuddy, sign us out. Thank you.